So I focus mostly on textiles, but also worked a lot with materiality. And in my graduate studies, I started working more and more with ready-mades and with big piles of clothing, like I would get a bale, like 900 pounds of clothes and at a time. Um, and so I became quite, I would say, addicted to working with things that had a past history, a past kind of life. And I would try to reveal the life that it had. So I started working a lot more with nature when I moved here because the environment, uh, the natural land, the land around us is so prominent. And um, I also became more interested in agriculture, which of course is not just nature, but in an industry. And um, so I moved from working with the clothes and the idea of the, of people's bodies to animal bodies, and also thinking of um, how animals are um, kind of understood <laughs> in agriculture as products. And I was thinking a lot about that and um, trying to find a way to bring out a to bring out the sense of the animal, um, that, there, that it, there had been a life there, the skin is part of a life, but also um, the industrial sense of um, how it becomes a product and to have both sides of that. And also working with the grid. So, I mean, I think if we look at farms from <laughs> like an airplane, we see a grid. And then I go back to my kind of um, weaving experience. I'm not a weaver, but I do teach basic weaving. My weaving experience and uh, weaving is all about a grid, the uh, warp and the weft and the intersection. And also thinking of a grid as, um, in terms of kind of mechanical reproduction. And so uh, the mechanization of the animal's lives so that they can produce more to feed us, um, feed us through dairy or through meat and also um, the shoes that I am wearing, um, you know, they, they are taking care of us in lots of ways. In terms of borders, I think of um, that there's different kinds of dualities going on. Um, be, and the materials that I'm using in this work are, um, well, cow hides that have been cut in straight lines and, um, and opened up, and plexiglass slats that have been um, fed through the, woven through the work um, at that inter those intersections and then turned so it opens, it literally opens up the hides. And so I guess I'm really, uh, for me, the borders are those kind of um, opposites like between the uh, organic hide and the, um, the smooth, clear <laughs> um, plexiglass that's completely industrially produced and one which is so, the hide is, has so much uh, variation within it. Um, and then the plexiglass is completely homogenous. So I'm thinking of those kinds of borders, but also in terms of the title, seeing and not seeing, um, Physically, uh, when you look at the hide, you might not even see the plexiglass. It, it can appear like the hide is just hovering. And um, so it's kind of like the structures that we use in order to uh, feed ourselves are hidden. And we can choose to think about it or not to think about it. A lot of my work has been um, in relation to memorials and has kind of a lot to do with life and death and remembering. 
and even light. So the plexiglass also brings light along its edges to the hide, which is a kind of death, right? I started the leather work in a lot of, in, in a way like a lot of people start doing leather work. I started by, um, I didn't know how to start, so I, I bought a kit. And I was starting by working um, not with the hair on hide, like the hides up in the gallery, but just a thick leather that then you can punch and stamp and you can lace. And um, so I started with that. I didn't actually finish my project <laughs> because it didn't hold that much interest for me. But I did start with that. And I was also researching um, what kind of patterns are used in um, leather and in Western wear. And I was seeing a lot of um, natural patterns, a lot of foliage and scrolls. And, and um, I felt per, um, personally um, suspicious of that. And that it was um, marking the leather as natural, but yet the way that I was acquiring the leather it was nothing natural about it. It was an industry just like any other industry. And um, so I wanted to find a way of working with it that I thought would bring that out. And that's how I ended up working um, with the grid so strongly, was to bring out that kind of mechanization. And I always try to work so that it's really a focus on the material, not um, my personal artistic expression, but just to focus on the material itself. It's not that I love cutting straight lines <laughs> or, or even find it easy, right? But it's just, um, I think that that um, brings out the, um, I guess, the kind of somber aspect and also points to weaving. Um, I did have the opportunity to show this work in, um, in Estevan, at the Estevan Museum and Art Gallery in Estevan, Saskatchewan. And um, one of the things, one of the um, people who saw the show said to me is she thanked me for, um, for doing a work that highlighted what animals give us. And uh, she just said that in passing to me as she was leaving the gallery. And I really um, appreciated those com that comment. And um, I think that that is a takeaway for, for me and hopefully for the audience too. Yeah.